pandemic. Now, what sparked our real pivot was we needed to understand what our buyers actually needed. Like we were making guesses um, and, and that kind of led to, you know, a lot of the customer research that we embarked on when I first got there. That was the real trigger and the spark for us to actually make an informed decision about what we do next. So I, I can't speak highly enough of first party buyer research. Um, that said, I have seen a lot of cases where research has been a project on its own, right? Like yeah. it's kind of, it's been the point and they've gone, you know, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, and you get this, you know, consultants report at the end with lots of free yeah. graphs. Um, walk me through, like, what was it that, like, what was the process of identifying what research you needed and, and what was the, um, the insight that you wanted? And then how did you conduct that research? So I think I had just come on board. My uh, product marketing leader, Leone, um, had also come on board. She was kind of my buddy. We, we started almost on the same day. Um, so we were brand new to the organization, which was almost kind of a good excuse to just go, oh, we don't know anything. Great <laughs> let's, excuse. Uh, let's, uh, let's ask some questions. And I think uh, knowing where to start was probably the biggest challenge. Something as big and, you know, as fundamental as, you know, what is our reason to exist and how do we actually drive our product roadmap to deliver on what customer needs are? What are they? Like, so where to start was always the hardest first step. And we almost fell into that comfort of process, right? Which is what you mentioned about, you know, yeah. the things that you're taught to do is go hire an external expert agency, um, brief in this, you know, 60 question survey that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars and get that statistical um, uh, validation at volume or, you know, and hopefully you'll know, you know, 12 months from now what to do. Now, um, we decided not to do that because, A, frankly, we didn't have the budget and we didn't have the time. So what we did is we said, OK, you know, let's start internally first because we need to bring people along on the journey. We're kind of outsiders coming in. Um, so we said, OK, what do we want to know? We want to know about our customers like brand new. We wanted to know what their current needs were and how well we were meeting them. We, in, we initially started with kind of five groups of cross-functional teams across the organization. People who work with our customers every day and, you know, help us understand what, what we believe the market needs, uh, what our customer is telling us and what our proposition is to them. Then and we map this all out. Sorry, were they in sales or customer success or product? They, like, were, they, they were actually across the board. So they were sales, customer success. Um, they were um, account managers. Uh, they were product in product and engineering teams. So real, um, real coverage. Absolutely, absolutely. Because we all kind of touch customers in different ways. So we were able to map this on a kind of two by two. You know, this gave us a view of what we believed were our target markets, like our ideal customer profile, what their needs were and how well we believed we met them. Um, so this was kind of part of our strategy. We wanted to do an internal versus external perception because perception tends to be reality, right? So. Yes. We played this back to our leadership. You know, this is what our teams believe. And then we wanted to then say, okay, do you agree? Do you align broadly? They said, yes. Okay, let's now go and talk to our customers. Um, so as I mentioned, we kind of discarded the whole big research consultancy idea. And we said, okay, let's just start booking some meetings with customers around the world. You know, we started with two that week and then five the next. And we just kept building so on and so forth. And in, 12, in two months, we spoke to over 50 customers at least for an hour, one-to-one. -one. That's um, awesome. That's a and, great run rate. Yeah. And and because uh, we were kind of really focused on it. And we also did testing with prospect user groups, right? Like using platforms like user testing in winter. Um, and finally, we also did make sure that we touched base with, you know, industry analysts like Gartner and, you know, Forrester, et cetera, to get a sense of, the industry direction and, and the kind of bio research that they did on scale. And this gave us a lot of insight, which surprisingly was very consistent um, and actually made our pivot on our proposition an easy one to action. So that that's interesting. So just, just going back, you, you did the internal perception and, and I agree, like perception is, is reality, whether it's yeah. right or not, it is what it is. 
Um, and then you presented to leadership. Was like how was that received, and was their thinking in line with the rest of the the internal viewpoints? Yeah, I think uh, when you do things like navel gazing, which is essentially what you do as an internal exercise, um, I think you you can go deeper than you expect. Um, there was consistency internally for sure, um, but I think we probably went. You know, sometimes you think vision, trend, way out there, you know, this is the future, this is the innovation that we need to seek, etc. The real interesting finding that we had was um, how that wasn't a concern to the customer okay. base and the prospects that we were talking about. Um, and so there, you there know, was a, a difference, right? Because that's, that's the next question, right? Of yeah. You had this internal viewpoint and then this consistent feedback from, from buyers and customers how aligned or divergent was that? Yeah, so so basically what we found, which was fascinating, right? What we found was supremely clear, like there's what we call a digital aspiration gap. So, you know, this is just the gap that exists between, you know, what you're promised that digital can do for you, which is, you know, you look at any site, maximize your potential, seamless experiences, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it's the gap between that mountaintop and the reality of ex- execution, which is the bottom, the valley of that, you know, mount, 